Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror film called The Exorcist. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In Iraq, a veteran Catholic priest, Father Marin, joins an archaeological dig where he discovers a small ancient sculpture that leaves him stunned. He becomes concerned and disconnected from the world after finding the artifact. Strange omens follow him while he's in the city, such as an antique clock stopping mid-stroke in his presence and nearly getting hit by a horse carriage. He heads back to the archaeological site, feeling a sense of dread as he faces the statue of a demon whose image the sculpture came from. In Georgetown, Washington, D.C., actress Chris McNeil writes notes on her script when a strange noise catches her attention. She steps out of her bedroom, following the sound of crashes and growls around her house. She checks on her sleeping daughter, Regan, whose window is open, letting the cold air in. Chris closes the window and tucks the girl under a blanket. The next morning, Chris asks her housekeepers Willie and Carl to set up traps in the attic, believing there are rats. Later that day, the movie set for Chris's movie, Crash Course, buzzed with people. Chris complains about the script to the director, Burke Dennings, who calms her concerns. In this film, Chris portrays a teacher who's angered about their school being torn down. After filming, Chris walks home, enjoying the scenery and sounds of the neighborhood. She passes by a church where two priests talk about feeling lost. Chris arrives home, learning that she's invited to a dinner party at the White House from her assistant, Sharon. Regan happily greets her mother and tells her about riding a gray horse that she borrowed from a man by the river. After Regan steals something from Chris, the mother and daughter run around the house, laughing. Meanwhile, one of the priests, Father Damien Karras, is bothered when a beggar asks for a donation in the subway. He visits his elderly mother, who is delighted to see him. Despite her frail condition and Damien's concern, his mother refuses to leave her apartment for a nursing home. He leaves her with money on the table and a kiss on her forehead. At the McNeil home, Regan presents her handmade chicken sculpture to her mother. Chris finds a Ouija board in the basement, which Regan claims she's played with before. As Chris is about to touch the board, the planchette moves away. She thinks Regan moved it, but the girl claims that Captain Howdy answers the questions on the Ouija board. Regan asks Captain Howdy if he thinks Chris is pretty, but there's no answer. Later that evening, Chris takes away a tabloid magazine from Regan, with a photo of them on the cover. Chris suggests sightseeing in Washington for Regan's upcoming birthday. Regan teases Chris of marrying Burke, but she insists that they're just friends. At a bar, Damien drinks with Father Tom, the president of Georgetown University. Damien is tired of the job and wants to spend more time with his mother, hoping to be reassigned to do so. However, being both a priest and a psychiatrist, Damien is considered the best fit for his job, leading Tom to deny his request. However, Damien questions his faith and believes that he's unfit for his job. On Regan's birthday, Chris is furious that her ex-husband refuses to answer her calls to talk to their daughter. Regan listens to her argue with the operator on the phone, disappointed with how her birthday has turned out. That evening, Chris wakes up to a phone call, asking her to come to work. She finds Regan in her bed, who claims that her bed was shaking, preventing her from sleeping. Chris leaves the room and hears the noises from the attic again. With a light broken, she lights a candlestick and checks upstairs to find the source of the noise. Stumbling in the darkness, Chris checks every corner until she finds a closed mousetrap with no rodent in sight. Suddenly, the flame in her candlelight roars before snuffing out. Carl appears at the attic door, assuring her that there are no rats there. One morning, a priest brings flowers to the university church's altar. He gasps, seeing the statue of Mary crudely vandalized. On another day, Regan goes through various medical examinations when she sees an ominous face in her mind. She then becomes aggressive towards the doctors and starts humming in a trance while waiting. The doctor tells Chris that Regan is experiencing a nerve disorder, which he deems normal for her age. He suggests that Regan is depressed over her estranged father, making Chris worry. The doctor notes that Regan swore during his examination, but Chris hasn't heard Regan use such words before. He recommends giving Regan stimulants to battle the depression. Meanwhile, Damien's mother has been rushed to the psychiatric facility by her brother. While they wait, his uncle comments how Damien could have been rich if he chose to be a psychiatrist instead of a priest. On his way to his mother's bed, the other patients cling to Damien, seeing that he's a priest. When she sees him, his mother starts crying, thinking that he forced her there. Damien calms her by promising to take her home, but she doesn't listen. Given their lack of money, Damien is unable to remove his mother from the facility. One night at the McNeil residence, Chris hosts a dinner party, filling her home with people in evening attire. Here she learns about Father Damien, who also acts as the psychiatric counselor for the university. According to his colleague, Father Joseph, Damien's mother passed away days ago. A fight breaks in the kitchen between Burke and Carl after the director makes racial comments. Chris carries the drunk Burke out of the door as the party continues. The guests gather around the piano when Regan joins them, telling a man that he's going to die before urinating on the carpet. Chris pulls her away and bathes her, heavily worried about her child. After tucking her to bed, Chris heads down but hears Regan screaming from the bedroom. Chris rushes to her bedroom and finds the bed shaking violently on its own. One evening, Joseph brings Damien alcohol, listening to his guilt over his mother's death. 
while Damien sleeps, he sees visions of Marin's experiences in Iraq, then of his mother calling to him. A glimpse of a demonic face fills his vision as he runs to his mother, who's heading down the subway, out of his reach. Over the next few days, Chris consults with multiple physicians who assume that Regan suffers from a neurological disorder that may have led to convulsions, hallucinations, and personality changes. But her brain scans present no lesions, leading them to a dead end. The doctors rush to their house, where Regan convulses violently in her bed, tossing and screaming for help. Her eyes turn white, and a monstrous growl escapes her throat. When one of the doctors approaches, she slaps him across the face. With a demonic voice, Regan screams obscenities and hits herself. The doctors pin her down and inject her with a sedative. All the while, Chris screams in agony over her daughter's condition. Once Regan is heavily sedated, the doctors share their theories on her condition. Abnormal strengths are known to happen during a patient's pathological state, which may have been how Regan tossed on the bed abnormally. But Chris is hysterical, not convinced with their claims. The doctors insist on doing another neurological exam to find where Regan's lesions are, but nothing appears in the results. Out of options, they finally decide to turn to a psychiatrist. When Chris returns home from the hospital, the lights in her house flicker. The demonic face appears behind her for a second, but she doesn't notice. She finds the window in Regan's bedroom open, causing the room to be cold. Chris covers her daughter with blankets before leaving to find Sharon. Downstairs, Sharon claims that Burke visited and was supposed to look after Regan while Sharon bought medicine. But Burke is nowhere in the house. The doorbell rings, and their coworker, Chuck, informs them that Burke is dead after accidentally falling off the steps outside the university behind their house. Hearing this, Chris is distraught. She turns and watches Regan climbing down the stairs on all fours, blood dripping from her mouth. Days later, a psychiatrist puts Regan under hypnosis. Here, Regan admits that there's someone inside her, and she's afraid of it. The psychiatrist talks directly to the being inside Regan, asking it to come forward. A photo of Regan falls from the fireplace as she starts growling. When asked who it is, her face twists in anger. She grabs the man between the legs and tackles him down until she's pulled away. While jogging in the university, Damien is approached by Lieutenant Kinderman, who's investigating Burke's death. Unbeknownst to the public, Burke was found with his head backward. With this and the recent desecration of the church, Kinderman believes witchcraft, or someone who believes in it, is involved. Kinderman asks if any of Damien's patients could have done these, but he denies it. Meanwhile, Regan is taken to a psychiatric facility for observation, where the doctors assume that she's suffering from delusions that she's possessed. Chris is adamant about keeping Regan out of an asylum. With no other option, the doctors recommend exorcism to convince Regan that the spirit inside her has been defeated. At the university, Kinderman investigates the steps where Burke died. He finds a peculiar sculpture hidden under the grass at the bottom of the steps. Climbing up, he spots Regan's window nearby. After taking Regan back home, Chris finds a crucifix under Regan's pillow. Chris asks Carl, Willis, and Sharon about the crucifix, but they deny putting it on Regan's pillow. They're interrupted by Kinderman, who questions Chris about Burke's death. Given that Regan was sedated that night, she couldn't have seen anything. Kinderman remains suspicious, wondering why Burke would leave Regan alone that night, only to fall at the university behind their house. He wonders if Burke was pushed out of Regan's window by someone who arrived that evening. While Chris pours more coffee for him, Kinderman finds Regan's clay sculptures on the kitchen window. The sculptures resemble the one he found at the university. After Kinderman leaves, Chris crumbles down, wondering if Regan was involved in Burke's death. A crash sounds from above, followed by Regan protesting against a demonic voice. Chris opens Regan's bedroom door and finds items flying everywhere. Regan is on the bed, screaming in a demonic voice as she stabs herself with the crucifix. Chris tries to pry it off her hands but is overpowered and thrown against the wall. Sharon and the others rush to help, but the door shuts on its own. Chris evades the large cabinet that hurls towards her. The mother cries in agony, watching Regan's head turn backward. Driven to the edge, Chris finally meets with Damien and asks him to do an exorcism on her daughter. Damien no longer believes in exorcism, having learned psychiatry and the other reason why people are driven insane. The exorcism would require approval from the church, which would be difficult. He recommends seeing Regan as a psychiatrist first, but Chris is tired of this approach. Convincing him, Chris takes Damien to their home, where he finds the sick and disheveled Regan strapped to the bed. Most of the furniture was removed from her room, and the bed is covered in foam to prevent her from hurting herself. The voice inside Regan claims to be the devil, taunting his guilt over his mother. Damien challenges it by asking his mother's maiden name. Instead of answering, the demon vomits green liquid on his face. Later that day, Damien looks through Regan's old drawings for clues while Chris washes and irons his clothes. He warns her that the exorcism may worsen her condition, but Chris is convinced that nothing could be worse than how Regan is now. Damien still refuses, knowing how difficult it will be to get the church to approve the exorcism. He recommends putting Regan in a high-facility hospital for observation instead. Before he leaves, he confirms that Regan couldn't have known about his mother's recent death. He walks away thoughtfully, still refusing to believe that the girl is possessed. Outside, Kinderman watches him leave the residence. That evening, Damien listens to old recordings of Regan's voice, comparing it to the one he heard that night. 
Days after, Damien records the demon speaking in Latin and French to send as proof of possession. The demon writhes in pain when he uses holy water, speaking in a strange language. Afterward, Damien speaks to Chris in her office, hearing that Regan's father doesn't know about her condition yet. He confesses using tap water instead of holy water, yet Regan reacted to it violently. Unsure how to convince him any further, Chris reveals her suspicion that Regan killed Bert. That evening, Damien plays the recording from earlier to a colleague, who claims that she's speaking English. Upon playing the recording in reverse, they listen to Regan talking in multiple voices as if arguing. Then, the voice calls Marin's name before Damien is called back to the house. Sharon lets him in, not wanting Chris to know what is happening to her daughter. They look inside Regan's freezing room, where Sharon unbuttons Regan's shirt from the stomach and shows Damien the scar that spells help me. This convinces Damien that Regan is genuinely possessed. He requests exorcism to the church, insisting that he does it himself. Tom suggests Father Marin, who has experience in exorcism, perform it instead while Damien will assist. One night, Marin arrives at the McNeil household. The demon senses his presence and roars. Marin refuses to hear Regan's story first but instead instructs Damien to prepare the exorcism. Marin warns Damien not to listen to anything the demon says as it will try to distract them with both lies and truths. Damien suggests three personalities in Regan's body, but Marin insists that there's only one. They head up the stairs, speaking to the distraught mother before entering Regan's room. The demon taunts them as they douse her in themselves with holy water. While Marin prays, the demon spits on his face and mocks him. It turns on the bed, being forced to listen to the prayer. The demon insults Damien's mother then starts lifting the bed, making it shake as it growls like a rabid animal. Marin demands the demon release Regan and the bed lifts in midair, stunning Damien. The room darkens, showing the face of the demon for a second. The demon tosses in bed then vomits green liquid as the two priests put their hand over its body, finishing the prayer. Damien washes off the vomit from Marin's scarf and returns it while the demon laughs maniacally. Marin coughs, struggling to keep up. He commands the demon to leave, causing the ceiling to crack and the furniture to shake. Marin draws the sign of the cross on Regan's head, and then the demon turns her head in a full circle. The demon accuses Damien of being at fault for his mother's death as the entire room shakes. The straps on Regan's arms break, and she floats in midair. Marin sprinkles her with holy water as the two priests command the demon under the power of Christ. Slowly, she floats back down. As soon as she's on the bed, Damien takes the straps and ties her hands and legs. The demon knocks Damien off the bed but is subjugated again by Marin's prayer. The room shakes, causing both priests to fall to the floor. In the darkness, they see an image of Regan stretching out to a demonic figure. The image disappears, allowing them to continue. Marin speaks to the demon, instilling the fear of God in it. When the demon quiets down, Damien covers Regan with a blanket. The two priests rest to gather their strength back. Damien is baffled at what he saw, frightened and confused. Marin explains that the demon likely chose Regan to make them doubt their faith. Marin excuses himself to the bathroom, where he shakily takes his medicine. Damien enters Regan's room again and sees an image of his mother, asking him why he left her. He sits by Regan's side and dabs a cloth on her sweating forehead. In his mother's voice, the demon begs him to release her. He refuses to be swayed, checking the girl's weakened heart. The demon continues to pretend to be his mother, causing Damien to grieve. Seeing him weak, Marin decides to perform the exorcism on his own. Downstairs, Chris finds Damien and asks if Regan will die. Damien promises that she won't. Determined to save the girl's life, Damien heads back to the bedroom while Chris answers the door, where Kinderman waits for her. In Regan's room, Damien finds Marin dead while Regan sits motionless. He attempts to restart his heart but to no avail. Damien is enraged, hearing the demon giggle at Marin's expense. He tackles the demon down and commands it to take him instead. The demon pulls off the medallion from Damien's neck. With the medallion off, Regan's demonic roars turn to the girl's cries. Damien's eyes turn green, signifying his possession. The demon reaches down to Regan, but Damien fights for control, sending himself out the window and falling into the steps where Bert died. Chris and Kinderman storm into the bedroom, finding the terrified girl crying. Kinderman checks outside the window, seeing students gather around Damien's body. Chris, still in disbelief over the events, realizes that her daughter is back and desperately hugs her. Outside, Joseph finds Damien struggling for life. Mourning for his friend, Joseph says his last rites as Damien passes away. A few days later, Chris packs up the house to leave the city. After everything they went through, Sharon decides to stay behind and quit being Chris's assistant. She gives Chris the medallion that she found in Regan's old room. Outside, Joseph approaches Chris, who tells her that Regan doesn't remember anything from her possession. Regan comes out of the house, bearing bruises on her face but otherwise back to her normal self. Joseph's clerical collar triggers a distant memory in Regan, leading her to kiss the priest on the cheek before leaving. The car drives away with the family, but Chris stops the car to hand Damien's medallion to Joseph. Instead, he insists that they keep it. Seeing the family drive off, Joseph passes by the steps where Damien fell before walking back to find Kinderman at the gate. Kinderman asks about Regan, glad to hear that she's doing well. The two men walk together, leaving the old McNeil house behind. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. 
and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.